Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Opuka Champion Anthony, a student from the Faculty of Computer Information System of Ghana Communication Technology. Today I'm here with some of my fellow students to take you to catch memory, catch his fresh shoe, and catch with the what it really means to the computer system. So this course is really a computer architecture course. It lies between the CPU and the main memory, that's the RAM. So instead of the memory to uh, the CPU to go to fetch the data from the memory, that's the RAM, it will rather check the catch memory first. Even the word catch really means hidden. We actually don't hear about the catch memory because it's hidden. We don't really talk about it. So that's what actually it does. It hides information or it stores information that was recently used by the CPU or recently uh, executed or frequently executed. So this catch memory really comes in handy play when you are using the web page on a browser. For instance, going through the uh, web pages, changing tab, so browsing through different websites. So it's the catch memory which will keep some of these commands so that it can it won't go back to the main memory, but rather fetch it from the cache memory, which allows the CPU to run more faster and increase its performance. So, or uh, the location of the cache memory. So the cache memory is located between the main memory, that's the RAM, and the CPU. Some modern machines have the cache memory embedded in the CPU, most of it. But they are in levels, they have the level one, level two. So at this stage, I will leave it to my other colleague so that he will take you through. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye. Hello, viewers. My name is Lalan Hamtou Dilimi, and I'm going to talk about cache memory. So in addition to what my brother said, cache memory is a type of high-level volatile computer memory that sits between a computer main memory and its central processing <coughs> Its purpose is to store frequent access data and instructions to provide fast access for the CPU. Reducing the time and it takes to fetch data from the slower main memory. Cache memory helps improve overall, overall performance by reducing the bottlenecks caused by the speed difference between the CPU and the main memory. Cache memory is organized into multiple levels. Each offering vary, varying levels of speed and capacity. The three primary levels are level 1, 2, and 3 cards. So the level 1 card, <coughs> it is the smallest and fastest cards level, often split into separate instructions and data cards. It is built into the CPU core, ensuring extremely fast access but limited capacity. Level 2 cards, Located inside the catch core, the L2, which is the level 2 catch, is larger than the level 1 catch and provides a slightly slower but still faster than main memory access. So, some modern CPUs have multiple levels of level 2 catch. So, level 3 catch, the catch level is even larger and slower than level 2, but it provides a shared 
card for multiple CPU core on a single chip, promoting efficient data sharing among core. Okay, so my other colleagues are going to continue from here. Thank you. Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my session. You know, I'm in the person of Rexford and I'm here to talk about the cache read operations. You know, the cache read operation consists of the CPU, the address bus, the data bus, the cache, uh, the system bus, and the main memory itself. So as we all know, the CPU, CPU is the central processing unit, as we all know, and, and, and you know, it is the brain of a computer, and it contains all the security needed to, to process input, uh, store data, and also output results. So, uh, you know, its main function, some functions of the CPU is to fetch, to uh, execute, to decode, to write back, and so on and so on, as you all know. So, uh, let's talk about the address bars. So, address bars, you know, address bars, as you saw uh, over there, you know, the CPU sends addresses of the memory location on the address bars and also is used by the cpu to fetch data or read data from any memory location from any memory location in the main memory and also is the address bar that carries the memory addresses from the processor and you also can see the diagram over there the address bars has an uh, intimacy or some communication with the cache that is when the address bars is used to identify the addresses on of the location uh, in the uh, cache or the main memory that is to be read or written to so that is also the address bars the, uh, the communication that's in between the address bars now we move on to the data bars the data bars also carries data between the processor and other components also and the data bars are uh, in wire connection dedicated to the uh, of for dedicated for the transmitting hot the data between the cpu and other hardware components so the data uh, uh, in in the uh, memory location is sent on the data bars back to the cpu so like we all can see the diagram illustrated over there you know the arrows which takes from the, the address bars to the uh, main memory. also gets back to the cpu that, that is what i said that memory location is sent on the data bars back to the cpu so uh, we are on now to talk about the uh, cache uh, the communication with the cache and the CPU also you can see that uh, arrows from the CPU to the cache and also it cache back to the CPU so uh, what it does is uh, the cache are used to store uh, temporary files or temporary data use uh, temporary files or temporary data used uh, or using hardware and software components and also uh, the cache uh, in the cpu uh, the cache in the cpu helps uh, to speed up data access by storing frequent need information okay and one last thing the, it, it reduces the need to fetch from slower hot memory location so as you can see for the diagram also you know uh, the cpu and the cache is very close and closer so it's, it's it's fast to get data from the cache which stores the which stores temporary files it's, it's it's faster rather than going to the main memory than to uh, fetch data or any files from there uh, that's what or uh, the the, 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 the cache helps the CPU to get uh, to fetch data fast without any slowing thing. So, so now we move on to the system bus. This is where I will end uh, the system bus. So as you talk about the system bus, so it's like a highway, mm, a highway that, as you can see from the diagram there, the diagram shows like a highway. So, 
It's like a highway that connects different parts of computers, allowing them to uh, communicate and transfer data from it. Very smooth, uh, very smooth operation. Its operation is very smooth. You know? It allows uh, the connection of any part of a computer from different parts of a computer to, to allow them to uh, communicate and also transfer data. And thank you to uh, having this opportunity to also get involved to learn something. Thank you. Hello, I'm Richard Apia. I'm going to talk about the effects of heat issue on average memory at six time. First of all, Average memory access time is a metric used to assess the, comp the performance of a computer's memory. Right? It's the time taken for a computer to access data from the various memories. That is the registers, the cache, and the main memory. That is the RAM. Okay, the computer is designed in a way that it provides the fastest access to frequently used data. Let's take cache as a small notebook you write down important points when you are learning okay so you you can revisit faster in the near future ram is also like the main bulky textbook that you are learning from okay so when you need answers to questions from the book definitely you first check the small notebook to see if you can get some important information or tips like before you check the bulky textbook because that would be way easier and faster that's how the computer also works. When it needs data, it checks the cache first before the RAM, which is slower. The RAM is slower than the cache. So the faster your computer gets data from the cache, the faster it works. When the computer finds data it needs in the cache, it is referred to as cache sheet. So the rate at which the computer finds data from the small notebook, that is the cache, without having to revisit the main textbook, which is the RAM, is known as the hit ratio. So the hit ratio makes us understand how effectively the cache works in the computer system. The average memory access time is the average amount of time it takes computer to access data from the memory, as I mentioned earlier. So definitely a computer with a higher hit ratio will have a lower average memory access time and will process data faster than a computer with a lower cache that has to visit the slower RAM to access data. Okay. Okay, so the above is just the math involved in solving heat ratio and the average memory access time. Welcome to this section of understanding heat ratio and its importance. So now let's start with the concept of heat ratio. So heat ratio is a metric that is used to assess the effectiveness of a computer system's cache or memory. In other terms, you can see hit ratio is used to measure the number of successive cache hits and cache misses of a computer system. Talking about cache hits and cache misses, these are fundamental terms that are used when discussing hit ratio. So now, cache hit. A cache hit is a situation whereby the computer requests for data that has been stored on a cache. So now, the cache determines and find the data and it places it on a web page. Now, cache miss. Cache miss is a situation whereby the computer requests for data from the cache. Now, cache miss only happens when there is no data stored on the cache. So now, the computer has to find the data from a slower storage and now the cache stores this data. So now, let's explore why heat ratio matters. A heat ratio indicates that the cache is effectively storing frequently accessed data. This results in improved system performance, faster response time, and smoother user experience. In terms of efficiency and cost savings, a hit ratio means that you are making the most of the faster and expensive cache memory, reducing the need for more expensive upgrades to larger main memory. Also, understanding the hit ratio can guide decisions on cache replacements and policies and algorithms. Different applications and workloads might benefit from different cache management strategies to maximize the hit ratio. Now, how to calculate the hit ratio? Calculating hit ratio is a straightforward thing. It is simply the number of hits divided 
by the total number of requests expressed as a percentage. Now, how to improve hit ratio? To improve hit ratio, you need to consider strategies such as optimizing cash size, using smarter cash eviction policies, and prioritizing frequently assessed data for caching. In conclusion, understanding hit ratio, hit misses, and cash hits and cash misses is crucial for designing efficient computer system. A higher hit ratio leads to better performance and user satisfaction. Thank you for joining me on this section of understanding hit ratio and its importance.